A person starts walking from home and walks four miles east, three miles southeast, five miles south, five miles southwest, and three miles east. We have three questions here. The first question is, this person walked a total of how many miles? Well, to answer this first question, we just sum these five distances. So we would have four plus three plus five plus five plus three miles, which equals 20 miles. So this first question is, the person walked a total of 20 miles. Now the second question, we want to find the total displacement vector for this walk. To do this, we'll actually write each part of the walk as a vector, and then find the sum of the five vectors to find the total displacement vector. And then for the last question, if this person walked straight home, they would have to walk how many miles? This would be the magnitude of the resultant or total displacement vector. So again, for these next two questions, so again, for these next two questions, we'll write each part of this walk as a vector in component form. And I've already set some of this up. Notice how if someone walks four miles east, or in this direction, four miles, Notice how the x component would be four and the y component would be zero. Next, if a person walks three miles southeast, or three miles in this direction here, we'll have to use that the x component is equal to the magnitude times cosine theta, and y is equal to the magnitude times sine theta, and because the person walked three miles, we know the magnitude is three, and then for angle theta, if we measure angle theta in standard position, which would be from the positive x-axis to the terminal side here, notice how this would be 45 degrees less than 360 degrees, or 315 degrees. We can also think of this as 270 degrees plus 45 degrees. Either way, theta is equal to 315 degrees, and therefore for the second part of the walk, which we're calling vector v sub two, the x component would be three cosine 315 degrees, and the y component would be three times sine 315 degrees. We'll come back and find these trig function values in just a moment. For the third part of the walk, which we'll model using vector v sub three, the person walks five miles south. So if the person walks five miles south, we should recognize that the x component would be zero, and the y component would be negative five. For the fourth part of the walk, or for vector v sub four, the person walks five miles southwest, which would be five miles in this direction, and therefore the x component would be equal to five cosine 225 degrees, since angle theta would be this angle here, which is 180 plus 45, or 225 degrees and the y component would be equal to five sine 225 degrees. Again, we'll come back and find these trig function values in just a moment. Finally, for the last part of the walk, the person walks three miles east, or three miles in this direction, so we should recognize that the x component would be positive three, and the y component would be zero. Now let's go ahead and find the x and y components for vector v sub two and vector v sub four. So we'll find cosine 315 degrees and sine 315 degrees. So we could sketch reference triangles like we did on the last video, or we can just go to the unit circle, and here's where 315 degrees would intersect the unit circle, and therefore cosine theta is equal to square root two divided by two, and sine theta is equal to negative square root two divided by two. So for vector v sub two, the x component would be three times square root two divided by two, and the y component would be three times negative square root two divided by two. So simplifying, we'd have three square root two divided by two comma negative three square root two divided by two. And now for vector v sub four, we want to find cosine of 225 degrees and sine 225 degrees. Here's where 225 degrees intersects the unit circle, and therefore both the cosine and sine of 225 degrees 
is negative square root two divided by two. So we have five times negative square root two divided by two, comma, five times negative square root two divided by two. So simplifying, we have negative five square root two divided by two, comma, negative five square root two divided by two. So to find our total displacement vector, or the resultant vector, we'll now find the sum of the five vectors, which are all written in component form, and then to find how far the person has to walk if they walk straight home, we'll find the magnitude of this resultant vector. So to find the resultant vector, or the total displacement vector, we'll sum the x components and then sum the y components. So we'll have four plus three square root two divided by two plus zero plus negative five square root two divided by two or just minus five square root two divided by two plus three comma. For the y component we would have zero plus negative three square root two divided by two or just negative three square root two divided by two plus negative five or minus five plus negative five square root two divided by two or just minus five square root two divided by two and then plus zero which we can leave off. Notice how here our common denominator is two so we multiply four by two over two and three by two over two and the same thing here for this five. And now we'll combine like terms. Notice how we do have a common denominator of two. For the numerator we have eight plus six, that's fourteen. Combining the square roots we have three square root two minus five square root two, that's minus two square root two. And now for the y component, again we have a common denominator of two. And then we have here negative ten. Combining the square roots we have negative eight square root two. And this does simplify. To simplify these correctly, we cannot just simplify the fourteen and the two. Break this up into two separate parts. This would be fourteen over two minus two square root two over two. So we just have seven minus square root two. And then for the y component, we'd have negative five minus four square root two. Now let's also get our decimal approximation for these components. To save some time, I've already done this. The x component comes out to approximately 5.5858 and the y component is approximately negative 10.6569. So the second part of the question was to find the total displacement vector, which in exact form is here, and the approximation form would be here. And now for the third part of the question though, we wanted to determine if the person walks straight home, how far would they have to walk, which would be the magnitude of this vector. So let's go ahead and find the magnitude. And we'll use the exact form, so we'd have the square root of the quantity seven minus square root two squared plus the quantity negative five minus four square root two squared. Let's go ahead and show this on the calculator. So we have the square root and then in parentheses we have seven minus square root two, right arrow, close parenthesis squared and then plus open parenthesis negative five minus four square root two, right arrow, close parenthesis, squared, enter. So if the person was to walk straight home, they'd have to walk approximately 12.0320 miles. Let's take these answers back to the first page. The total displacement vector has an x component of seven minus square root two and a y component of negative five minus four square root two. And if the person walked straight home, they'd have to walk approximately 12.0320 miles. I hope you found this helpful.